Shotgun conservation. A syndicate shoot targets greys for the greater good. It's going to be a loud, exciting morning. <laughs> How to cover your bitch. Dave the dog reveals all. 63 days later, you will get a litter of puppies. Dismal is one word to describe the state of police firearms licensing in England and Wales. Deborah Hadfield finds out what's going wrong. And after showing enough last week, we have a stalker's mate from Keith's high seats to give away. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. That one. Cool. Maybe we need to change the way we label a shoot like this. We know it's a squirrel shoot day, but it's also a group of people volunteering, giving up their Sunday as part of a wildlife conservation effort. If this were a beach clean, it might even get on the local news. It's Jack who has extended the invitation for us to come along this morning. <laughs> David met Jack on a deer move day with Roy. With the offer of a sociable morning and of course some al fresco dining, what's not to like? So Jack, you invited me along this morning, so what's the plan? What's going to happen? Um, we're literally just going to have a fun day shooting drays. Uh, we'll use the thermal just to sort of see if anything's at home. And then, yeah, if there is at home, we will just blast, basically. It's going to be a loud, exciting morning. <laughs> Hence why we've got loads of cartridges. But it's literally just everything that I could find. Old clay cartridges, 21 grams, 24 grams, just everything. Bits and bobs, bits and bobs, but it, it will, will be good. And the shooters themselves, where, where have you gathered this lot from? Um, so these are mainly a syndicate, where well, the woods that we're in is a, a actual pheasant shoot here. Um, and yeah, they're just all, all members of it basically. So I got invited through Ant and then I invited you. Cool. <laughs> it's um, all good. Shoot. Obviously shoot uh, magpies, jays, pigeons. This magpies. syndicate shoot in Sussex is very hands-on. Gamekeeper Anthony Oliver gets hundreds of working hours out of the guys to make this shoot work. And he, like so many other keepers across the country, are carefully doing their sums yeah. for the 2022-23 season. He's already sought approval to add another gun to the team. So what's your theory then, Ant? My, my theory is that one squirrel can eat maybe 100 grams a week a day. Mm -hmm. So in a shooting season, 100 squirrels by my calculation, it works out 1.2 tonnes of wheat, which at today's prices, and the prices are going up and up and up. So last squirrel shoot we shot 50, so that saved half a tonne of wheat. And oh then there's all God. the damage to the forestry as well. Uh, well so that's uh, just all that stuff bonus. goes on anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. And if you talk to people who do chestnut, post and rail and stuff like that, the damage that squirrels do early on on the trees shows itself up 15, 20 years later. Right. When, they're, when they're cleaving out rails and stuff like that, the yeah. centre of the tree is screwed. So yeah. they do it, yeah, it will. you know they do a lot of damage. So. Cool. But that's, like my that. little that's my little theory for the, for the wheat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there he goes. He's going up. One. Dinner. <laughs> really? No. You had it ever? You had it ever? Uh, I did have it once years ago. I gave some to my dad. Um, <laughs> but that's I, still not you having it. Well, I did try it, but I did tell my dad. Well, sorry, I didn't tell my dad what it was. Um, and it wasn't until he had sort of three or four mouthfuls I told him, and then he, yeah, he didn't like it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite funny at the time, I must admit. So, boy or girl? Uh, boy. There we go. Stuff. Lovely, jubbly. Right. Let's even get some more. This exercise is all about reducing songbird egg and chick predation by this alien invader. It reduces the impact on the health of the trees, plus, more importantly than ever before, limits the costs and damage they cause to a shoot. They even turn the feeders over and open the lids. Just a few grains left in the bottom will entice a hungry squirrel to chew through it. Bad, Halfway through and we have a count up. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, While ignoring the shot ratio. 16, 17, 18. That's me. However many else. 15, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that was a, a gamekeeper's tool? It is, and I think they call it a larder gun. So you can fill your larder. 
So you can shoot on the ground and in the air. <laughs> so just tell me about the calibers. Uh, it's triple two, 12 bore, and it's got multi chokes you can change. And uh, it's very handy in the woods. So if you're on a long ride and you see a fox or something, you can shoot it. Or if you're close up, you've got the shotgun. That was my main thing. Um, was my re main reason for getting it. I put a red dot sign on it recently, yeah. which is like cheating. But it's it cheating. <laughs> but it works, it works really, really well. And uh, yeah, you can shoot slugs with it as well. Cool. Very robust bit of kit. And uh, what, was it, what make is that then? It's just a bicycle. Okay. But um, I know you can get all the all the German ones, like the Krikovs and stuff like that, which are five, six, seven grand. But I believe it shoots just as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't poke up. There are a lot of drays, but few residents. One heads for a hole in the ground. Surely it's another Childerly style extraction. I'm not as brave as Paul Childerly. <laughs> That's a no yeah. then. Have you ever been bit by a squirrel? If no. Go on, get it. Make a hole from that. Got it, you got it. Good dog. <laughs> Jack clearly doesn't have an issue with his dogs dicing with the sharp end of a squirrel. The Spaniel's hard mouth anyway, she doesn't pick up. She will pick up off of water, but that's about it. She's pretty useless to be fair for picking up dogs. I don't, <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't get bitten by that, would you? The shooters splinter off into smaller groups and come back for food at the beater's hut. Spam, sausages, onions, beer and salad. Oh, and it looks like there's space on the hot plate for squirrel straps. I'm going to cook it. Oh, Been watching Pascal with his <laughs> cooking. Here's some Pascal action. Then. That's it. <laughs> oh, Jack, you are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Not actually a lot on this one. With 20 plus greys on display, add 100 grams of grain a day, plus fewer songbird nests raided and trees chewed, it's a successful haul. Wildlife management is active, not passive. You don't protect birds by sitting at home worrying about them. And these guys should be applauded as much as the volunteers walking the high tide line, putting plastics in a sack. You've got a knife. Thank you, Jack, and all the guns for that day. Next up, sharp-toothed and yet still fluffy, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Welsh farmers are reacting angrily to a ban on magpie, jay and rook shooting and a season on crows. Responding to the pressure group Wild Justice, Natural Resources Wales is making several changes to the general licences. The new restrictions begin on the 1st of July and will cause harm both to wildlife and livestock in Wales. Gareth Wynne-Jones, who has a farm in North Wales, says magpies will wreak havoc on other birds. It's that word balance, kid boys saying Welsh, that we can keep nature, you know, at its best by taking away some of the predators. And however we look at it, I think the magpie is one of the biggest predators we've got. Forestry England is advising people to eat venison to save woodland. Will my right honourable friend agree with me that news of six NHS hospitals set to trial pheasant, partridge and venison on their menus is extremely welcome? Join me in congratulating British Game Assurance on their work in helping make this possible. And can we have a debate on the value of game as healthy, nutritious, flavoursome and sustainable meat that more parts of the public sector should seek to procure for menus in schools, hospitals and beyond. Its head of environment and forest planning calls venison an ethical choice for meat eaters. The government forestry management body says that huge herds of deer are threatening to destroy Britain's most precious natural sites. Forestry England adds that they eat plants, young trees and even birds and insects. It claims that the number of deer has risen from 450,000 to 2 million over the last 50 years. It blames soaring numbers on mild winters and the extinction of predators, such as lynx and wolves, more than 500 years ago. Forestry England now culls 14,000 deer a year in order, it says, to protect the countryside. Game meat, including venison, is now on trial in hospitals. Driven shooting will be more expensive next season compared to last, but not as bad as some feared. 
An analysis of let days on Guns on Pegs website shows prices range from £40 to £60 per bird. Concerns that the price could go up to £80 are, so far, unfounded. Field Sports Channel's James Marchington, who runs a small syndicate shoot in the southeast of England, says his guns paid an average of £35 per bird last season, and he expects that to top £40 in the coming year. People, people may find things a bit, uh, a bit tougher than they did. They may scale back a bit. Some of the commercial shoots will, um, you know, no doubt be a little bit squeezed. But shooting will continue. A new report says that there are only 3,500 mountain hares left in England. Manchester Metropolitan University and Queen's University Belfast carried out the research. The People's Trust for Endangered Species paid for it and briefed journalists that the last surviving population of the white hares in the Peak District is at risk of extinction. The research is at odds with a study done by the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust earlier in 2022, which claimed the hare population may be higher than previously estimated. Gamekeepers say their figures are more accurate because they counted at night as well as day. Hunters and shooters from the UK are setting up a charity to help Ukrainian refugees. Ukraine Equestrian Relief has taken nine horse boxes filled with aid to the border of Poland and Ukraine. Set up with the help of the High Peak Trail Hunt, it's also raised more than £57,000 through donations on the GoFundMe page. The team has already filled another four horse boxes with aid that people are donating and they're planning a second trip. Mark Cayley is a farrier from Derbyshire and has already been across. He's organising an auction to raise funds for a second journey. It's not just today, it is for you know a considerable long time, probably even years to come. And I think uh, that we're all aware of that. Uh, and the refugees and the people that are coming out of Ukraine need all the help they can get. Details of how you can help, including the GoFundMe page, is in the description below. Wildlife crime in Scotland has fallen by more than half since 2012. The Scottish Government's annual wildlife crime report looks at reported crime, prosecuted crime and even crime that anti-hunting organisations think may have taken place. Those recorded by Police Scotland are up by 13% year on year to 2020, though down more than 50% since 2012. Scottish Environment Minister Mari McCallum is using the 13% figure as an excuse to push through her replacement Hunting with Dogs bill, currently going through the Scottish Parliament. The Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust is encouraging supporters to donate when they shop. They can choose to make a contribution through the Amazon Smile Scheme. Amazon shoppers can sign up online or in the app to choose which charity gets a donation. The retailer pays a half percent of the sale price of items to the charity. It doesn't cost the buyer any more, but it can raise cash for worthy causes like the GWCT. Instructions on how to sign up are in the description below. Charity shoots are lining up big names for this summer. First up at the beginning of July is charity veteran and former cricketer Ian Botham. The Lord Botham British Game Assurance Challenge is at the Royal Berkshire Shooting School. Two weeks later, Hollywood star and former footballer Vinnie Jones is taking part in the Six Mile Bottom Shoot. This event will raise money for CALM, the Gamekeepers Wildlife Trust and the National Gamekeepers Organisation. Not to be out Vinnied, Lord Botham is also rumoured to be taking part in a star-studded event in Germany, organised by Shoot for Charity, which hopes to attract royalty plus more big names from music and movies. We'll be keeping an eye on who bags the biggest haul for good causes, Vinnie or Beefy. More details on the events are in the description below. Television presenter Phil Spencer has completed a trek across a glacier in Norway to raise money for a game meet charity. He's with a group who walked 80 kilometers in five days in aid of the Country Food Trust. They experienced temperatures of minus 20 degrees crossing one of the country's largest glaciers. Phil is a patron of the Country Food Trust charity, which provides meals from game donated to people experiencing food poverty. He sends this report from the ice. <laughs> there was no easy bit of this little challenge. Um, this extreme winds earlier in the week compacted the snow, so it's, a lot of it's very icy, which is particularly tough when you're pulling a polk that um, you can't steer. Hunters and conservationists are criticising a planned ban by the Belgian government on the import of animal parts. 
Safari Club International says that rather than benefiting wildlife, the proposal will obstruct wildlife conservation in Africa. It urges the Belgian minister to reject the parliament's demand with a separate solution to protect critical conservation efforts. SCI is joining forces with partners in Europe to fight the ban. Meanwhile, US authorities are relaxing trophy import restrictions to allow elephant trophies to come to the US. This follows the September 2021 settlement with the Dallas Safari Club, a big game hunting organization that sued the Trump administration in December 2019 for pausing trophy permit processing. Conservation bodies across the world express concern that restricting the importing of hunting trophies will damage biodiversity in Africa. And finally, a woman in Mexico rescued a dog hit by a car and cuddled it all the way to the vets. Imagine her surprise when the vet told her it was not a pet, but a wild coyote. Andrea Athi said the animal was not aggressive and happy being cuddled. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stuck in the stories, fishing for facts. Now, spring may be sprung and the sap may be rising, but when it comes to the mating game, some animals need help. Top gun dog breeder Dave Templar explains to Ollie Williams how to get a dog and a bitch to tie. You've got gloves on, I haven't, I'm quite concerned. Well, this is just in case I have to handle a dog. Okay. I'm sure you've seen gloves before you've ever yeah, seen Yeah, yeah, no, well, I'm not going to ask you to bend down. longer with the arm length when you've got cows. What we're going to do, this is actually a lovely champion bitch of Andrea's. Um, and we're going to try and show what it takes to mate a bitch in the certain formats of what we're trying to look for. The dog actually is outside. He's ready to come in and mate the bitch, all right? So we're going to try and see how it goes. But if you were bringing your bitch today, say this is your bitch and you've asked him to mate yeah. it, I'll say we'll put it in a pen. We don't let it run around the garden and around the field. And what we do is we let the dog in to start with, let him get a climb close to itself. And you'll see, see her pushing her tail up in the air. That's what we were talking about flagging. So when you tickle her tail, she'll push her tail to one side. So she's actually presenting herself to him. And then he'll jump on her back. Okay, that is very and long, hopefully he is straight up for it. But what you'll find a lot of times is a lot of bitches will be aggressive at this stage and they don't want to be mated and they certainly don't want to be mated naturally. All right? So what we're going to do is show you what we would do to help him out, okay? He's waiting outside. Do I let him in? In a minute, we're going to let him in. but. If we were to say this bitch was a little bit aggressive or you have a problem, it's a first time bitch or you haven't mated it and it's first, you know, it's older bitch and you've never mated it, what we would do is handle it. Andrea, it's her bitch, so she's going to hold the bitch. You're going to let the dog in. I'm going to kneel down, that's what the gloves are about. I'm going to kneel down. You, can you kneel down, please, madam? And I'm going to hold the bitch like this. So I'm going to hold her properly. You could let the dog in for me, take him off the lead. Oh, oh. he's got so keen. Hold on one sec. There we go. And I will help him. That's really the true way of handling them. Making sure they're in the right place, doing the right job. Right. Now he is now mating her. He's about to... From the point of view, he's now ejaculating. So we're okay. And then, whoa, he's come off her. And then that's what you call slip mating, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to bring him back in in a minute when he cools down. We all go on about tying. Now, what happens is when you're doing it manually, you're putting it in for him. So the bitch itself, she will clamp down on him and he has a knot there. So as it pushes in, she clamps down so she has to be contracting. And then he will swell up and it's there. They don't necessarily have to do this. What it is actually designed to do, it's actually in nature. Nature's way, if he was a fox or a dog running around in the wild, he could come up on, on a leg and he could just mate her like that, ejaculate and walk away. Yeah? Yeah. And he hasn't done the job. So nature's invented it that he will continue to try and mate her until he ties. Myself, by having my hand there and being able to do it, I know that he's put it in the right place. Yeah. So they don't necessarily have to tie. 
We're going to bring the bits back down again and allow him to meter again and then you'll hopefully see the tie. The knot's gone right in and so he's now clamping on her. You'll see now he's ejaculating, everything's okay. He's going to calm down when you're out in the wild. Which is a really vulnerable part of your life. So what will happen is they both freeze now. If I could just take my lead from you, Ollie, so I can hold the dog. So they're now tied. Now this is all to do with now, if you just pull the lead up, she'll freeze. She'll now freeze. Just pull her tail across. So she's laid out, she's fitted in. Now he's tied to her. This is what you call the tie, okay? Sometimes when I get really bored, I give him a bowl of dog food and then that takes him his mind off the job and he finishes. At this point, the uh, the semen has obviously entered the bitch. Yes. So it, it's, uh, essentially the job is done. Yeah. Um, it's nature's way of saying he's actually done the job properly. And we've had this one uh, ovulation tested. She's actually now right on her middle of her days. And so she should take now. And then 63 days later, hopefully, fingers crossed, yeah. you will get a litter of puppies. So we've been still here for 10 minutes yeah. and they've still tied. How long can a tie last for? How long do you last for? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Dave. For more on Countryways Gun Dogs, go to countrywaysgundogs.com. Thank you, Dave and Dolly. Now, are you going to the stalking show in Staffordshire this weekend, Saturday the 9th and Sunday the 10th of April? If you're there on Saturday afternoon, David Newsreader, Wright and I will be there doing our field sports live show. Visit thestalkingshow.co.uk for details. Last night, we gave away five pairs of tickets to members of the Field Sports Nation via our Tuesday night Field Sports Extra show. Next week, the competition prize is a stalker's mate from Keith's High Seats, as featured in last week's show. If you want to know how to win it, easiest way is to sign up for the Field Sports Nation who get to watch Field Sports Extra each week. Link in the description below. Do that, and you get to support our work, such as this piece. News correspondent Deborah Hadfield finds out how the firearms licensing system in England and Wales is falling apart. Delays, refusals and confusion. Shooters and hunters in the UK say firearms licensing is a postcode lottery. Nottinghamshire Police is the latest force to stop processing applications. Livens Gunsmiths is a family business which started in 1850 Hi, yeah. in Burton upon Trent. It has customers from all over the Midlands. They say where people live makes a huge difference to their licensing experience. Because we're sort of slap bang in the middle of the country, we have people coming from sort of all over. Um, and we find that some people tell us that they've been waiting 12 months for a license, whereas some others might be a couple of weeks. So it's, it's pretty much like a bit of a postcode lottery as far as getting a, an FAC or a shotgun license or a variation or renewal. Um, so yeah, it's a bit, it's quite random. Well, for farmers and, and those sort of shooters, for example, that are doing it for a living, uh, it can be pretty frustrating because obviously they can't go without buying ammunition, for example. So that's pretty frustrating for those, those sorts of uh, shooters. Bask advises people to apply for renewals at least four months in advance. Even then, there's no guarantee how long it will take. I think the way that uh, Chief Constables have resourced firearms licensing departments is definitely different. Uh, and you can see that. I mean, some forces are very well resourced, other forces really struggling. Um, so I think that has an impact. But you do have that, that perfect storm of um, post-COVID, the introduction of statutory guidance, the uh, COVID booster programme, all of those combining together and they, they have had a real impact. But the fact remains, certain forces, as I say, Lincolnshire, Essex, uh, Cheshire, do seem to have managed to uh, continue to provide a, a reasonable service. Nick Basson is a bird shooter and deer stalker. When he moved home in London last year, he submitted his licence for a change of address. He waited more than four months for police firearms licensing to return it. Socially, it's been frustrating. Um, you know, you, you miss out on, you know, there's so much anticipation uh, throughout the year you, uh, you, you, put in the, you put in the practice. Um, 
you want to try out a new recipe <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and the, the opportunity is 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 missed um and it, and if you if you think about it logically it, in my particular case i think it it could have been avoided Nigel Appleton is a deer stalker and rabbit shooter in Cornwall. He fears the police in the southwest are overreacting to a shooting in Plymouth in August 2021. Becoming increasingly disturbed at the way they're acting at the moment with taking people's guns off them. Um, they appear to be confusing complaint with evidence. Um, when they do turn up, they're giving no excuse, no reasons. They're not producing any sort of um, documentation and said, this is why we're doing this. Um, and it's quite apparent to me that they're confident that the average Joe can't afford to take them to court so they can just get away with doing what they want. The blame for the current firearms licensing mess lands at the door of individual police forces and they pass the blame on to the Home Office. The Home Secretary issued the guidance in November that some police forces claim means they can't administer shotgun and firearm certificates, though other forces blame a combination of Covid and high demand. The Home Office is now launching both a review of firearms licensing fees and a tender for a central register of guns. Basque says it welcomes a system to replace England and Wales firearms licensing database, the 15-year-old National Firearms Licence Management System. On fees, it's not so happy. Basque, the Countryside Alliance and other organisations are part of a working group meeting Home Office officials. Shooters say the current crisis in firearms licensing must be resolved before the government increases fees. For more on the licensing challenges that shooters face, see the links in the description below. Thanks to all for those interviews. Now from guns to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the top hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Primal Nomad puts on Instagram that he's practicing calling in and tracking Munchak for his DSC1. Plus, because this is a bushcraft channel, there's some wild mushroom foraging too. Thanks to David from Predator Protection UK for sending me this on how to stalk rabbits. He made this video for several customers who bought rifles from the shop where he works. And thanks to Matthew Downey, who asks me to mention this fox shooting channel, Fox Takers, here dealing with a vixen and a dog in the lambing fields. Chris Parkin is out with a new toy, the Borgie, a cutout wild boar on a remote control vehicle which he sets about shooting with an air gun. Viking Arms imports Leupold scopes and here is Vikings Andy Norris dragging a Leupold scope around behind a motorbike. Watch the film to find out why. Stuart Blair from Vermin Control Scotland is filming rat shooting with his Theoban, all filmed through his scope with a GoPro. Many of you use the Hunt Stand hunting app. Hunt Stand also makes videos. Here Hunt Stand pro staffers Will Cooper and Brian Murphy are after coyotes and bobcats in South Texas. And finally, you may have seen Chris Scheiber on Field Sports Britain in recent weeks transporting refugees from the Ukraine. He has a fishing lodge in North Norway and this is a review of the sea fishing there in German on Stefan Seuss's channel. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's for this week if you haven't done so already please whiz over to our website fieldsportschannel.tv where you can click like us on facebook and on instagram you can follow us on twitter subscribe to us on youtube pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show field sports britain it's at 7 p.m uk time every wednesday and this has been field sports britain good hunting good shooting good fishing and goodbye <laughs>